guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Misha for those of you who are new and today I'm going to be sharing my wedding day tips and advice for those of you who are soon to be married and also some of my regrets from my wedding experience. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, you may not know that I got married this year in March of 2021. So it's been almost nine months since uh, my wedding day. And since we had this pandemic that we had to deal with and all of the ever-changing restrictions, we actually had to divide our day. So I like to call it we had our, our second wedding day, um, September the 4th. And that day included a, a mini like vow renewal ceremony as well as our dinner our reception dinner party which we could include more people in September than we could in March so in March our we just had our small um, church ceremony which was so sweet and it was honestly like such a perfect day so a lot of my tips and regrets um, are gonna be based off of the second wedding day because that's the day that involved all of the planning and the vendors and the um, the bells and whistles, like the big day. So let's jump right into it. Number one, I would definitely say that you should hire a wedding planner and or a day of coordinator um, for your wedding day. So I did not hire a wedding planner or a day of coordinator. So um, I also thought that wedding planning, like I could handle wedding planning myself. I didn't think that it would be that much work because my my intention was to be a very stress-free bride. I was not going to be crazy and I just was going to go with the flow. But what I didn't realize was that like planning a wedding of, and our wedding wasn't even huge, like we had 75 guests. Well that's how many we even invited. We didn't even have that many because not every single person came. But um, planning a reception, which is really like a dinner party, for that amount of people without any kind of a day of coordinator or planner to help you. We had two caterers because we had two different types of food for two different cultures. It was a lot of logistics and coordination for me, the bride, to do by myself. And so um, even if you can't afford a wedding planner and you want to take on the planning um, yourself with your brides, with your groomsmen and bridesmaids um, and family, that's fine. But the day of coordinator, I would say, is imperative because it takes a lot of stress off of you, the bride, um, and the groom. You don't have to be the ones managing things on your special day. You don't have to be the one concerned about whether or not guests are being attended to, or they're getting the right food, um, whether or not like things are going according to your itinerary. like. You want someone that's going to be in charge of making sure the day runs smoothly and so that no one has to be coming up to you and asking you questions about things on your day. For me, I regret that so much because it really, when venue staff were coming up to me to ask me questions, like while I was seated at the table trying to like enjoy the dinner, I had so many things going on in my mind while I was sit seated at the head table that I wasn't even able to just like chill and like talk to my girls about things and like just enjoy the food because like I had venue staff coming up to me asking me questions about um, what vendors were eating and like different things that I was just like I had arranged these things prior but obviously like things things get messy sometimes and um, I didn't have like a day of coordinator to fix those things for me so I think that that is something that is imperative okay number two is to be present in the moment and this kind of connects to what I was just saying um, be present in the moment like sit down and when you're sitting at the head table with your party wedding party like enjoy that time with them when you're sitting next to your husband um, enjoy that time with him and don't be thinking in your mind like and worrying about whether everything is going smoothly and that's what was happening with me unfortunately like I wasn't able to disconnect from being the wedding planner and the whole day of coordinator and then just being the bride I was trying to be all three I guess in one all the time and on your wedding day you want to just be the bride and just soak it in because the day is gonna go by really fast and then all of a sudden it'll be over and you're gonna be like that's it like because you would have missed everything mentally if you're in your head all day. Okay, number three also kind of connects with number two. You need to remind yourself that things will go wrong. And people tried to remind me of this and I really tried to listen as well. It's just that, like I said before, like I was just so caught up 
in all of it. You have to not have the expectation that your wedding day is, to be, is going to be the best day of your life. Brides often do this and I think it's a dangerous expectation because the day may not be the best day of your life and that is okay. Because really all the wedding day is, is the first day to a long life journey that you have with your partner and there's going to be so many other amazing days that come after your wedding. And I spoke with my maid of honor about that before and she even said that like her wedding day was not the best day of her life. Like, I mean, her children, the birth of her children was more of like, you know, a better day I guess than the day that she got married. It's a different type of day. But um, there are so many other amazing days that come after your wedding day. And really the, ce the ceremony and the union is the most important part. But the big party and the reception and all the people and like all the decor and all that stuff, like everyone forgets about that, honestly. <laughs> like I I'm sure if I went and asked my guests if they remembered like our centerpieces, like most of them probably wouldn't remember them, honestly. And like I was so concerned about them. <laughs> I was so concerned about all the decor, I was so concerned about everything looking perfect and it's like at the end of the day, like I even forget some things. <laughs> like so I just think that like we really need to lower our expectations if you want to really enjoy the day and just be like laid back. Um I learned so much from that experience and I know I'm not gonna have another wedding day again, but any other type of event that I may um, have in the future, which I'm sure I will have um, reason to have grand <laughs> celebrations in the future, in Jesus' name. But yeah, like if I'm maybe throwing like a ch child's birthday party or like even like a baby shower or um, I don't know, like some other big event that I'm really excited for and that I, I feel myself having those high expectations for, I've learned that like I'm just going to really remember because of this wedding planning experience that I want to just be in the moment and soak up all of the things that are happening around me presently and not be so concerned about all the details and not be so in my head. So that's important I think. Okay, number four is to sleep as much as you can the night before because the day of your wedding you want to be rested, you don't want to look exhausted. Even if you're going to have a makeup artist, oftentimes if you have huge bags under your eyes, like those are still challenging to cover and also it's like important of how you feel on your day, you know, you don't want to be exhausted um, and tired. You want to have energy to dance with your, with your friends and um, you might have a lot of walking to do depending on where you're going to get your photos taken and stuff so you definitely want to have energy and um, I would say that even the week before your wedding I would try and not have anything like major to do and really try and just like relax as much as possible. I would also advise to take time off of work before your wedding if possible. I know that like for me I only took time off after because we were going on our mini honeymoon and this is that was for the first event I took time off after. For the second event I didn't even take any time off because I had a new job so I literally had this wedding day on the weekend and then went back to work on the Monday which is another reason why like it was just it was just interesting. I think the pandemic really affected the way like the wedding happened. I think that having the reception and the ceremony on the same day and like everything it would have still had stressful points i'm sure but like i said in the beginning like that blissful um feeling that you have on the day one when you first like get married to your person and you're so excited to be married i would have had that to help me during the reception when things didn't go wrong but since the second wedding was seven months after we got married that feeling wasn't there in the same way so everything was dependent on like this party being perfect and or limit your DIYs um, some brides decide that they don't want to DIY anything um, and if you can afford not to DIY I wouldn't it's, it's time consuming it's a lot of work like unless you really want to put a special touch to something on your wedding day and like know that you did this thing by hand or something and make it really special sure but um, I would say that if you can afford to the budget for it, don't DIY because it just, it's tiring. You're going to have to DIY things like really close to the dates, certain things, especially if you're doing like flowers and stuff like I did. Um, 
limit your DIYs. I would say if you have anything to DIY that can be done ahead of time, like get it done way before the date of the wedding, um, I would recommend not DIYing like your bouquets and stuff unless someone else can do it for you because you have to do that the night before so that they're fresh and it's really time consuming. So <laughs> I DIY my bouquets. I don't regret it because I already purchased flowers um, for my first ceremony and they were beautiful but I wasn't going to purchase flowers again for the second one so I decided to do them myself and they actually turned out really pretty but it was a lot of work so it took a lot of time. This is number six and this one is really important. So make sure things are communicated really 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 clearly with your vendors. Um, so vendors are people that you would hire um, to for your wedding day such as um, your photographer, videographer, um, caterers, MC, DJ, those types of people um, and I regret um, just not being as clear with some of my vendors and I try my very best to create itineraries and kind of send those out to everybody and try and make sure that everybody was on the same page but um, in the end not everybody was on the same page and not everything was followed exactly as how I would have liked it to be um, and so I just think it's really important to make sure especially the vendors that like are really gonna be helping the wedding day move forward smoothly you want to make sure that they know exactly what you're looking for they know exactly how you want things to be done and like I even if you send instruction, I would say like literally like double check with them the day before that everything is good to go. You don't want misunderstandings on your wedding day. Since some of that did happen on the day, then of course that affected me mentally during the day as well because I was just thinking like, why are these things happening? <laughs> so, um, and the other thing to also tie into that too is like, I think that you should really decide what your top priorities are and like pay, you know, top dollar for the things that you that you want to be as perfect or as great as possible because I think like of course um, it's so nice when we have friends or people that we know that want to give us a discount on a service or do us a favor or not even charge us for doing something for the wedding and that's great and all but I think sometimes um, when you have a situation like that the person that is doing it um, for free or for a discounted price may not take it as seriously as somebody that like a professional that you hired um and that can kind of get messy too especially like if you're friends with the person or like their family member or something um and you don't want that like for your wedding day like you don't want to be disappointed but then you also don't want to like hurt a relationship or something because of that okay number seven is don't pack your wedding reception itinerary too full especially if you want to have time at the end to like just dance and chill and and mingle and talk to people that are actually at your wedding day um before people start leaving don't pack too many things in your reception um, so that it's like so busy up until the end and then once everything's done and the cake's cut people start leaving and you may not have even had a chance to see them or even like dance with them or whatnot so I think um, we, ours wasn't packed too busy but like we did have a cup we did have a game that kind of went longer than it needed to go and I feel like I definitely didn't get to say hi to everybody and I know that happens at most weddings um, and ours wasn't even huge but like that's why in hindsight I probably would have even kept it smaller so that it'd be a lot more intimate um, because you know it's nice to be able to like talk to your guests and um, I love dancing and I had a high expectation that I was gonna be like dancing the night away and I feel like a lot of people had to leave um, before like the dance floor like the songs that I wanted anyways ended up being played so I did get to dance at least me and my husband danced a lot and I did dance with a few of my girlfriends before they had to go um, but yeah, if, if the end of the night, the actual party part is really important to you, then don't pack like too many speeches and too many games or like too many other things into the, the night. Just keep it simple. Nine is to enjoy the food that you have paid for. <laughs> so we had two wonderful caterers who catered Nigerian food and Caribbean food for um, us and our guests. And um, I went to the tasting and I tasted for the Caribbean food and I tasted it and it was delicious. But honestly, like I barely remember eating the food on my wedding day and I barely remember what it tasted like. 
but my guests my friends did have so many compliments on the food so i'm happy that like my guests liked it <laughs> my friends said it was delicious they like wanted some of my friends wanted to know where we ordered from and stuff um so yeah great feedback so that's awesome but like yeah i don't really if my husband remembers but i don't remember even the my mind at that head table was so consumed with the fact that like certain vendors were not following my itinerary <laughs> like things were not going as planned one person was left out of the speeches like and i was just like a lot of things <laughs> the smoke or fog machine that we paid for wasn't used at the time we wanted it to be used like there are so many things and like my mind was just thinking about all that stuff while I was at the table so like I remember eating salad and I know I had fish and I know it I think it tasted good but honestly I didn't enjoy the dinner with my friends as and my husband as much as I would have liked to if my mind wasn't consumed with everything else so definitely eat so that you have energy and try and actually taste the food <laughs> And last but definitely not least is photo and video. So despite everything that I am saying right now that I missed, I feel like I missed out on because I was so mentally um, occupied, at least I have a beautiful wedding video and photos to look back on. Looking back at the photos after was amazing. Like the photographers, our photographer and videography team um, were great and that is one of the vendors that I was like it's one of my top priorities so I'm gonna pay for a good quality um, good quality team I did my research and I knew that that one was really important to me and I didn't want to err on the, the cheaper side for that so and I'm glad I didn't there's so many things our photographers captured that I wouldn't have ever seen if not for them and then the video um, we're, we're actually still waiting for our, our full length video because um, be, just because of the pandemic and like everyone postponing their weddings our, our team was really really backlogged um, from summer weddings so we're being patient with that but um, we have our we got our highlight video a while back and it's beautiful and so just to be able to look back at it and like to see my girls and everything and like it was it was such a nice day because of all the love that we had our family and friends that showed up for us and my best friends that were there yeah like it was a day surrounded by family and people that love us so much and so i'm so grateful for that and i'm grateful for everything that went right <laughs> and that's what i really had to focus on um the next day and the next like week or two that i was kind of like going over everything and decompressing and processing that this wedding happened and it's over and all that oh so i hope that these tips really help soon to be married people to um be able to mentally prepare for the day and to try and really 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 enjoy the moment and for those of you who are already married like me and that might have some regrets about things that went wrong or maybe you just wish that you yourself had been in a different headspace on that day i hear you i understand you my advice for you would just be to focus on really what went right that day um, be grateful for the things that did go right and at the end of the day the most important thing is that you married your person and that's what i hold on to as well um, i hold on to the fact that i had the first day the first day had all the feelings that i wanted to have on a wedding day and at that point i was thinking i still really needed the big day i still really needed the reception and everything um, because that's the wedding the traditional type of wedding that i always dreamed of having but now in hindsight the first day was the day that i felt that fairy tale bride feeling um marrying my husband that day was amazing and yeah we felt all the all the bliss we went on our mini honeymoon for a few days it was just it was fairly local it wasn't um, overseas because of the pandemic but even so we still got away and we were able to like enjoy each other for those few days before coming back to real life <laughs> anyways guys i really hope that you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the, our wedding highlight video i will be posting that later this week so definitely like the video <laughs> give it a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed and turn on that bell notification so that you will be notified when I post a new video thanks so much guys bye